What's up everybody? It's Henry from the PSI Defense Channel coming to you with another video. Uh, many of you saw my FSC fixes um, slash um, regulator modification video where I showed you guys how to beef up the springs on the FSC T8.1, T9.1 uh, trigger group. Um, you could beef up the springs and it makes it much more reliable and consistent. Um, it eliminates a lot of the feeding issues um, with high power through these launchers. Um, so if you like this one, this is another step that actually, um, if you do this mod, which I will link that one in the description, if you do this mod that I'm about to discuss in this video, you will actually increase your power. So I'm gonna, uh, I did it with my FSC with a 16 gram CO2 with the Comrie Tech Matic. Um, I shot 40 joules with this five inch Grimberg barrel um, it was only the first shot. The other subsequent shots uh, were still strong, but nonetheless, I got 40 joules from this with a 16 gram CO2. And I'm going to show you today how I did that while modifying my T8.1 SMG to do the same thing. So what we'll be doing now, of course, I can't stress this enough. You're going to want to do um, the, the spring modifications that I showed you in the other video. Um, what you're doing is you're uh, increasing pressure on the sear spring, on your shimming, the rotator spring, which is this guy right here. That's the rotator, and that's the rotator spring. I put a little piece of a um, safety pin, the safety pin loop in there to shim that, and I doubled up on the return springs. Really, the most important one is the sear spring right here. It's a torsion spring and I'm working on getting some more powerful torsion springs because the modification I did in the bend that uh, you'll see in the other video, it does give it more um, power and flexibility, but I'm either gonna purchase some stronger springs or have some made eventually. Um, but this seems to be working for now. Um, my FSCs, which uh, if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you'll see have been giving me a lot of problems. But ever since I did that modification, I have absolutely none of those problems. So now we're going to get more power out of it. Now that it's stable, we're going to get more power, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Guys, here is the T8.1 benchmark test. I've got a magazine of 8 joules. All reliable here. Great click. Six. And again, this is 12 grams of CO2. 377. Three forty four. Three twenty four. Two fifty six. Had a drop there. Two forty three. 225 and 232. I believe that's it. All right, that's our benchmark test. We'll go ahead and do the PRV delete and then come back out here. So first thing you want to do is remove your magazine, remove your barrel, and this one got the 9 inch eBay barrel with the first strike Lapco screw on mock suppressor. And this is actually barrel extension. If you look down in there, uh, you carry over the internal diameter of your barrel with this edge there. That's why I've been getting 20 to 30 FPS by just screwing this on various barrels. Not only is it cosmetic, but it's also very functional. Uh, I'm going to remove my foregrip laser tack light combo. Love this thing. Um, and since I'm taking it off after I'm done with this, I'm going to um, bore sight it again. I have a laser bore sighter. I've also got a video on how to do that. Now, let's see. Yep, I'm going to take my Allen keys. I love having a bit driver because it makes it a lot simpler to uh, disassemble my markers. Okay. 
came with the T8.1. It's a little more complicated to get inside of this trigger guard and to loosen these screws. And like the FSC that just has two screws outside, this has one where you stick the Allen key straight through the trigger guard, which is no problem. The bolt spring just came out. Set that aside. All right, we're going to need this Allen key anyways for the modification. Actually, I'm going to come out through the side, loosen it up. Now through the trigger guard. All right, and then you're going to want to hold it together once you loosen that one. Take out the bolt or the screw. You got the bolt. And then there's also inside there where the bolt threads into, there's a this, uh, steel washer thing. Now this is under spring tension, so you're going to want to slowly release that. Take that spring out. Okay. And you see that pin right there? So we're going to push that through. There's the pin. Now your FSC is ready to disassemble. Alright. Feed that trigger through. There we go. And take your O-ring just like the FSC. Set that aside. I'm going to pull my trigger side. Actually, I'm going to leave the regulator intact. I think I can show you from right there. A lot of you guys have been asking about, you know, steel bolts uh, aluminum versus aluminum bolts. Um, there's been a lot of talk and speculation. Well, the thing is, whether it's steel, it's, well, um, uh, a buddy of mine on Facebook told me that uh, all the bolts are aluminum. This darker one. If you can, that shows you very well. It's got kind of like a black coating on it versus this straight aluminum finish one. There we go. Can you see the difference there, guys? The one in the marker is got this black coating, and this one, straight aluminum. The difference is about 10 to 25 FPS, sometimes more. We call this one a steel bolt, um, but it's not magnetic. Uh, it practically it weighs the same as the quote unquote aluminum bolts, but these things are beasts. So um, we don't know exactly why they're better. We just know they are. So until I get further definitive proof of what is going on there, um, I've heard it was some kind of a, a steel type coating on there don't really know but okay I'm leaving that on because the modification that I'm doing today I guess I should have told you guys already is PRV delete I'm sure you saw that in the title of the video that's why it is imperative that you have your regulator modified in order to accommodate this because once you delete the PRV your springs are going to need to work that much harder in order to do their little dance to make things happen for you. All right, so to get that out of the simple enough, you're going to take your velocity adjusting Allen. I am going to count the amount of turns that I'm getting to take this off so that I can get so I can get it back to pretty much the exact same place, um, but with the PRV delete, so we can see what the difference is, okay? So to get the accurate amount of turns, I'm gonna stick this in just like this, and I'm gonna count how many turns it's gonna take for me to get this out of here. Do three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15
So basically, once I get it threaded, it's 17 turns to get it all the way out. So that is what I'm going to do. Alright, now I'm going to take my Allen key. Put that down in the PRV valve so that I can just wiggle this out. Because there's some vacuum in there. For, there we go. From the O-ring and the, the chamber. So there's a little bit of vacuum that makes it somewhat difficult to just pop out. But there we go. So I can set everything else aside because this is where we're going to be doing our modification. So I'm just going to simply unscrew this carefully because it's under spring tension. There's that. So I've got the hollow hold down screw, the spring, and then there's this little valve here. And I'm going to take all that out. I'm going to store it in this little bag for future reference. All right. Boom. Then I have a little box with all my air stuff. Got extra spring pads, regulator spring, got burst discs, heat core o rings, even got a spare bolt. Oh, that's a heat core actually. Got regulator shim and spring kit. Just all kinds of air and tons and tons of different o rings in this box. I find it very handy and easy to keep track of my stuff when I compartmentalize everything like that. So, got my spring pad, gut, pad guts in there in case this is a abysmal disaster and then it does not turn out working in my T8.1. So, what you're going to need, you're going to need some of these 10-32 um, by 1 quarter inch socket um, set screws. I'll put the link in the description. There's what they are right there. Got these off Amazon. I think they were maybe six bucks for a pack of, I mean, 20, yeah, for a pack of 25. Okay, basically all they are, it's replacing that hollow set screw with a solid plug. And you know me, whenever I'm threading air, I'm going to use Teflon tape. Right, let me get some scissors real quick. Okay, just so I can get a flush end to start with. Because usually when you pull that off, it's just going to kind of stretch and rip, which is fine. But other than that, now I'm going to put this on my Allen screw. And the way I thread it on, I bear in mind that I'm going to screw it in like this. So I don't want it to come loose as I'm threading it in. Okay, the way to properly thread this so that um, it doesn't want to unravel when you're screwing it in is, okay, I've got my Allen key in the screw and then I'm pointing the sharp point away from me. Start wrapping from the bottom. Now your Teflon tape is gonna be wider than your bolt if you get this size, but that's all right. I'll overlap it from the top some but mostly from the bottom. Just try to get it as even as possible. And with this bolt, you're not gonna need a lot of wraps around. Really keep it tight. I would say maybe about three, four layers. Okay, so I'm gonna squish it into the bottom. Take your spring pad and then simply thread it in. All right, should go easily but with some tension because it's thicker, but you're getting that really good air seal there. All right, feeling good about that. All right, so it's in there, and I'm probably just, yeah, I'm just going to rip the excess off of the top of there. All right, there we go, my PRV delete. Okay, while I've got it out, I'm gonna lube the O-rings. Always a good thing to do. 
You know, I love my gun drops. And let me put a little drop. I'm gonna try to get it down the center because there's that. Got it. There's your spring and your ball bearing valve in there. And when you have a regular um, pressure release valve hole there, you can just drop oil down in there without disassembling it at all. But now that we no longer have that. Okay, I'm going to put that down into there a little bit. Also going to put some first strike laceration ointment on this spring. They recommend you put this um, on the spring inside your tank regulators because I guess there's some movement going on and it's good to have some high viscosity lubrication on there. So I'm going to assume to do the same thing here. You just rub it on the outside of the spring. Saw this on First Strike's install video of doing the pressure kit. So there we go. Always good to keep a well cleaned and lube marker. All right. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So had 17 turns. Let's see if I can get it. Here we go. Right. Find out the point where it drops down. Okay. That's one. Alright. I can do no more, but I'm not gonna get greedy. I had it set to where I got my best FPS across eight shots. So, all right, this is set up to where it was prior to the disassembly as far as the velocity setting. I'm going to drop some oil in my trigger group. Not that that's going to make a huge difference in FPS numbers, but it's always good to keep that looped up. Whenever you get opportunity. The enemy of these things are leaking O-rings and such, so best way to avoid that is to keep them lubed. All right, so I'm going to stall my trigger. Stall the O-ring. All right, let me show you guys how I reinstall this, because this can give a lot of people the blues. So, so I've got this point forward. Got this pointing forward. What, what I do, always be mindful of that O ring. I'm constantly pushing this back into place because a lot of times I'll get it in, that'll pop out, and then it'll just be a nightmare. So if you can see, I'm kind of holding that O ring. Then I'm going to take my thumb and hold that spring forward while I feed this through there. You see, if I hold that O-ring, then I can kind of give it a little bit more twist. All right, so I'm still in there. All right, and then seat your trigger, and then put it back together, okay? And then what you're going to want to do, hold it together, stick your pin in there, and... If it's not sliding right in, then that means your trigger just needs a little bit of finesse. And then it'll go right in. Now I can just lift it up. Upside down, dropping my spring right on top of there. Then I'm going to Take this bushing or this grommet or whatever, drop it in where the safety is, 
and hopefully, yep, if you have a two-piece safety, that can give you some drama. Then I'm going to drop that in there, tighten it up. And once you get that done, you have zero worries here on the home stretch. Okay, so, yeah, make sure everything is feeling okay. And since I did not remove the regulator, I didn't have to push the bolt forward or fiddle with any of that kind of stuff. All right, bolt spring goes in. Barrel, where are you? All right, this is a uh, T8.1, T9.1 eBay barrel, so it does have two indexes, one for hopper and one for mag fed, but since this is strictly mag, got to do it like that. Okay, before I put my moxie presser on, put my highly coveted aluminum compensator on there. Yeah, if you're going to put a foregrip or anything on your marker, you've got to have one of these for the aluminum rail because the plastic stock rail just doesn't cut it. Like I said, I'm going to have to bore sight that again. I like to keep my markers very accurate. Alright, thread that on there. Alright, and there you have it. So I'm going to take this into the firing range, a.k.a. my dirty garage, see what kind of gains we got. Hopefully I don't get any jams or any stupid stuff like that. No, forget that one. All right, I'll see you guys out there. All right, guys, PRV is deleted. Same magazine of eight joules, 12 grand CO2. PRV deleted in my baby here. All right, great click. Hopefully, you get no malfunctions. Uh, 386 is what I got on my first shot for the benchmark. Uh, over 400. 343. 347. 288, quicker drop off it seems like. 289. 251. 275. 227. There we go. All right, here's our ballistics test for our first two mags. As you can see, shots one through eight was our benchmark. Started out at 55.4, which is very impressive numbers. I attribute that to a longer barrel, the mock suppressor and the steel bolt. Um, started off at 55.4 joules, ended up with 20 joules, very respectable numbers. Um, when I did the PRV delete, as you can see from shot nine, jumped up to uh, over 60 joules with a 12 gram CO2. That's pretty insane. Um, but I experienced a pretty sharp drop off um, to 343 FPS, which is 43.7 joules. Um, held pretty steady there until about um, shot seven and then uh, ended up with 19 joules. So I would say that more of the uh, gas is going towards each shot. Um, for the higher first number um, but being that more gas is going towards the shots um, it expels more gas per shot it, it's looking like that's of course my estimate so we'll do a few more tests with different FPS settings what I think I'm gonna do is turn down the velocity see if I get more shots across the whole mag Of course, I meant more FPS across the whole mag. All right, I turned it back one full turn counterclockwise. 
reducing velocity. Let's see what I got here. Three eighteen. Three forty three. Three thirty seven. Just lost one out the muzzle. Three hundred. Two seventy three. Two forty nine. Two sixty. There we go. Okay. Let me try it one more time and I'm going to screw it in one half turn. All right, guys, I got a fresh CO2. I'm going to increase my velocity one half turn. See what kind of results I get. That's over 400. Let's see how much power I keep. 341. Similar drop. 353. 311. 235, 222, here we go. And here's our ballistics from the PRV Delete with one half turn from our original numbers. And as you can see, I'm shooting over 60 joules in the first shot, um, over 40 joules in the next two shots. Um, shot number four down to 35 and then 31. All of those are very hard hitting numbers. Anything beyond 30 joules uh, really can do some damage. And then on down to 22.7, uh, 20.5, and 18.3, which a lot of countries, European countries around the world are like, whoa, those Americans are still shooting crazy numbers, even at their, the last shots, which are uh, pretty impressive. 18.3 joules where uh, law enforcement uh, riot weapons um, they're mandated to only shoot up to 16 joules. So still really good, but as you can see, um, the drop off with the PRV delete um, is pretty sharp. Uh, starts out, I mean, it's hitting 60 joules. You can't, it's, it's crazy with just 112 CO2 uh, canister. Uh, I can really imagine getting a lot better benefits um, with HPA, given the larger air source and more consistent pressure output. I will definitely be trying that in future videos. So stay tuned. Okay, I'm gonna do one more test. Got the Comertech 16 gram CO2 magazine. Eight shots. This is what I usually keep in this thing. And I've got HP 68s on deck. So what he recommends, at least with this uh, uh, first model, which is what I have, is that you pierce it before you stick it in because you can pierce it quicker and lose less gas that way. Doesn't look like I lost any. Alright, give it a good slam up in there. These prints are very strong. They can take it. Common Tech 16 gram. Let's see what we got. Alright, without a doubt. Over 400 on the first shot. 371, 337, 320, 286, 272, 256, 237. There you have it. All right, guys, finally, here is the ballistics from the Comritech 
16 gram CO2 magazines. Um, as I anticipated, I carried a lot more FPS um, throughout the magazine than I did with 12 gram CO2, um, which lends to my theory that uh, this will do great with HPA. As you can see, um, I got over 60 joules with my first shot. Uh, second shot was extremely respectable, 51 joules and then 42 joules, all very high powered, um, intense stopping power shots, even to the 38.1 and 30.4 joules. Um, really crazy numbers there. Um, but as you can see, with uh, getting 61 and 51 joules in the first two shots, that air has to come from somewhere. Uh, it's coming from the rest of your shots. So I may do some uh, velocity tweaking, may turn it down a little bit more just to find a sweet spot to where I'm finishing out the mag at maybe about 25 joules or so, maybe even 35 joules. And um, I'm sure that will be uh, better numbers, um, something I could be happy with. I'm just really trying to push it for you guys for the video, uh, but I'll do some tuning and tweaking. Um, but this modification uh, is, is great. Uh, it's putting all the air into each shot and uh, HPA would probably yield some really insane numbers on this. Uh, so I'm probably gonna leave my uh, CO2 markers with the PRV delete. Um, I think they would, it would be a lot more beneficial uh, deleting them off your HPA markers. Um, however, I'm gonna leave mine this way and find the sweet spot. If you really enjoyed this video, please share, please like, and, and most definitely subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out, helps me uh, get the attention of more sponsors that I can present a lot more products to you guys, show you how to maximize all kinds of different markers and all kinds of different ammunition to protect you, to protect your home, protect your property. Make sure you show love, be quick to forgive, and overlook other people's faults, because we all have them. Take care of yourselves and take care of others. Check you guys later.